It's your boy Q from Next Level Reefing, and I'm back with another video. First and foremost, I'd like to say thank you for all the love and support. I show sure do appreciate it. And with that being said, make sure you hit that subscribe button and smash the notification bell so you can be notified of every video that I drop, which is every single Friday. All right, so let's dive into it. So in this week's episode of the Waterbox Dream Take Build series, I'm just gonna give a quick update of what's been going on with the tank last week's episode i was talking about dialing in my alkalinity and calcium and gonna dive a little bit more into it this week as well so i've actually been having some trouble trying to dial in my numbers for alkalinity and calcium well specifically calcium alkalinity i kind of got it dialed in uh where i want it which i like i said was 9.8 so i did the test like i said i was going to do i waited 24 hours to see what the results was going to be and the dosing actually came out perfect so it went from 9.5 or 9.6 to exactly 9.8 now the equipment and elements that i'm using is actually going to be all bulk reef supply product i'm using the bulk reef supply two-part doser and as i stated before in my previous episodes i still have some of the older bulk reef supplies soda ash and calcium two-part and to get my calculations as far as how much i need to dose i'm actually using three things so i have the apex junior i'm using the bulk reef supply calculator and i also came across this website called reeftronics.net basically it's a program generator that helps you get the code that you need to put into your apex system to dial in the specific amount of calcium alkalinity or magnesium and let me know in the comments below if anybody has ever heard of this website or heard of this program and actually used it um, let me know how it's been turning out for you because for me my alkalinity like i said before has been spot on I'm having real trouble with the calcium. For some reason, like it overshoots it by a ton. So for example, the calcium was at 457, give or take, and I wanted it at 480, right? So I put in the numbers on the website for exactly what I needed to get to. And I did exactly what it said. I put the information into the Apex Junior. I waited another 24 hours to check the numbers and see where it was at. The alkalinity was fine. Like I said, it was spot on, but for some reason, the calcium went from 457 to like 520 something. So I was like, oh man. So now I gotta wait for that to like dial down a lot. So at least to go down to where I want it, which is 480. So I don't know how long it's gonna take. It might take a couple of days. I'm gonna wait at least 48 hours and check and see where the calcium is actually at. But even with all that so far, the corals are doing a lot better than what they were before I started trying to dial in the calcium and alkalinity. 
I don't know if I had any footage of my Red Monty plate coral in the last week's episode or the episode before that, but it was really starting to fade out in, in the red and it looked like it was starting to leach out a little bit. But uh, within the last couple of days or so, and I got a, a video of it, it's actually starting to give its color back. So that's pretty awesome. And even my octospine was kind of like retracting a little bit and it wasn't as fluffy as it used to be uh, before I started dialing in. And within the last couple of days, like I said, it's starting to fluff out a little bit more, actually a little more now. So that's also pretty cool too to see. So the other corals that's been doing pretty good has been my green toadstool. Now my green toadstool leather, it's kind of been going up and down. Like some days it looks super great and then some days it looks like it's about to just give out. But it is doing a lot better than it was last week's episode. So I'm glad to see that too. My hammer corals are also uh, back into fluffy mode. Um, so I'm really ecstatic about that because I didn't like seeing them looking so depressed and shriveled up and they look very awesome in the fluffy so it's good to see them back into that. Now this one's kind of like a good slash okay coral. So that red Ganipora that I got from David from Charlotte, I don't know if it's bleaching out cause it looks more pink now than it does red, but you know, they're extending, they're eating, they, it looks good. So I don't, you guys let me know. Has it ever happened where the Ganiporas have bleached out but still look okay? And are they supposed to like change color? Cause I have heard depending on how your lights are, which lights you're using and where you actually put them in the tank, they could change colors depending on the person's tank. So you guys let me know if that's actually true or not. Now my slowly but surely Zoa Garden, they're all doing great. I even saw some more polyps uh, de being developed on that green Zoa Garden. And you know, that is just dope. Now with my Blasto, I actually saw that two more heads grew from that one head. So that's pretty dope. I can't, I try to get some footage of the other two heads, but because it's the, the placement in the tank, it's kind of hard to get a good close glimpse to it. And I didn't want to zoom in and kind of pixelate the picture. So hopefully you guys can see it. If not, I'm gonna try my best next time to actually dial in and, and show you guys that. So now I'm going to get into the corals that either aren't doing so great or have just been the exact same since I've had them. So I'm going to start with my frog spine. Now my frog spine, I've only seen that thing kind of look fluffy maybe one or two weeks the entire time that I've had this thing and I've tried moving it. Uh, if you go back into my other videos, you can see that it was closer to the octo spine and then it was looking just like how it's looking now. So I moved it to where it is now and it was fluffy for a minute. And then, like I said, my calcium and alkalinity numbers kind of went crazy and it's been shriveled up looking this whole time. So I'm hoping it's going to bounce back, uh, but we'll see. Now you guys let me know in the comments below what this coral actually is. Now when I bought this coral, they said it was a torch coral, but the tentacles have not been extending since I've gotten this. And this is like my A1 day one coral and it's looked exactly how it looks in the photo now in the video footage now. I've tried moving it. Uh, when the fish were in there, the clownfish were trying to host it. So I'm kind of glad that I got them out so it can kind of breathe and, and, and relax for a little bit. But I see some days it kind of extends a little bit and some days it's like right back into looking like how it was when I first got it. So you guys let me know if this is actually a torch or is this some sort of hammer? Cause I also uh, know that hammers can look like torches as well because they'll just have like the uh, thicker tip. But you guys let me know. Now with my trumpet coral, it actually grew another head. So I'm, that's dope. But the head that was already existing when I first got it, one of the heads is like some days it, it, it looks great. And some days it looks like it's dead and turning into a skeleton. So that's one of the ones that's kind of like some days it looks good, some days it doesn't. But with the two bigger heads, they've been consistently looking good the entire time. And even when I feed them, they retract and eat the food 
like they're supposed to. So, so far so good with that, but I'm just really hoping that the other head that looks kind of like it's on its last leg would bounce back and, and be great like the other two heads. Now, I don't know if this is good or bad, but my GSP, I, that's another A1 day one that I've had and I put it on that rock when I first got it. And I was going to say that it's been growing pretty slow, but looking at my very first video and then going up to the, this video now, um, it's actually grown a lot. You guys let me know, Is it is? do they typically grow slow or does it depend on which type of GSP you have? You know, let me know guys. And then the other toadstool I have, I don't know if it's like a purple toadstool, I can't remember the exact terminology of the thing, but that's another A1 day one that I've had and it looks exactly the same. It's like a, a weed for the ocean. Like I, I, I've dropped that thing in the sand, I've like the fish have knocked it down um, and it just comes right back but it hasn't grown since I've gotten the thing. So I don't know exactly if it's supposed to grow or if it's just supposed to stay the way it is. You guys let me know, because it has not grown since I've gotten it. All right, so now that we got the corals out the way, let's go ahead and move over to what's left of the fish. And unfortunately, I got more bad news. Dory, AKA, just keep swimming did not make it and this one's more of a pissed off type of feeling than anything because like i said if you guys looked at my previous videos which i highly recommend you do so if you haven't done already when i was gathering all the fish to put them into the quarantine tank it looked like dory was on its last leg even then but like i said i used cooperman and it bounced back and it was it seemed healthier than ever and even the day that it died it was still eating and it was still kind of like claiming its territory it was swimming around with the trigger fish like it was just seemed healthy to me but the i started noticing like white patches on its side and this was already um, after I stopped dosing Cooperman and Prozzi. And then I noticed it grazing the pipes that's in the quarantine tank. And I'm like, oh, I know there's no way that there can be ick in this tank because it still has some sort of substance of Cooperman. Now, and I did do a 40% water change a few days prior to that. So there is no way that this fish can have ick or any of these fish rather. And if you guys know what that is, please let me know in the comments below. I wish I would have took a picture or video and showed you guys exactly what it is, but I didn't and that's my bad. But basically what I'm gonna do to be safe than sorry is just go ahead and do a complete 100% water change and then use Cooperman and Prozzi Pro regularly instead of stopping like I did. And the other thing that I started to notice too with the yellow tang is a red line going across it's like i guess it's like skeletal structure and it's starting to be shown on both sides and i kind of noticed that the shiny coat on the fish is looking a little dull as well and it's still eating so i'm hoping to put medication on the food and then it'll eat and and hopefully get healthier from the inside and work its way on the outside that's what i'm praying and hoping because i <laughs> i i can't take the chance of losing another fish so as far as the current stock list now i have the yellow tang hopefully um purple tang is still up and living uh both the clownfish two blue green chromis and the male blue throat trigger fish which with the blue throat trigger it's finally starting to eat in front of me it's still like hiding in one of the pipes but it's at least coming more out and about and, and kind of getting out of its shell a little bit and swimming a little bit more around the tank so hopefully as the weeks go by it's going to get more and more used to me feeding it and knowing when it's feeding time instead of waiting till after i leave and before i head out of here i wanted to give a shout out to my lfs fantastic aquariums 
I won a hundred dollar raffle, y'all. And I am super excited for that. I don't know what to do with that. I don't know if I'm gonna get fish. Well, actually, you know what? <laughs> I'm probably gonna hold out on getting fish for right now until I figure out exactly what's going on uh, with my current fish. So I might either just wait or I might get some corals if they have some good deals coming they, they do like an update every friday so i'm going to check and see if they got something going on if not i'm just gonna wait all right and so there you have it guys that is what's been going on currently with the water box dream tank and stay tuned for next week episode i'm going to actually be doing a product review and unboxing and i'm also going to show you the products that I use to test my water uh, parameters. And like always, thank y'all, I appreciate y'all, and I'll see you on the next one.